All right, what's up, guys? The 115th installment of the Unplugged Alpha podcast. The podcast is based on the book. If you haven't got the book, make sure you get it. It's available on Amazon in its second edition, and the Audible version comes out very, very soon. Um, tonight, we're talking about loneliness, and it's one of the, one of the things, that, things that pops up a lot. Um, I think we've all dealt with it at some point in our lives, and I get a lot of people asking me questions uh, about you know, being alone, loneliness, how do you deal with that uh, feeling um, and conquer it sort of thing. And, uh, you know, I've had a, a few moments in my life. Um, let's go back in time. Story time, right? Um, there's a program in Ontario. Um, I think it was called the Ranger Program. They, when I went, it was modified to the Junior Ranger Program. And I just looked it up before the show because I was actually curious if it still exists. Uh, they now call it the Stewardship Youth Ranger Program. So if you Google Stewardship Youth Ranger Program in Ontario, then you can learn a little bit more about it. Um, but if you have kids, they would qualify at the, I think they qualify at the age of 16, but it says here, youth born in 2007. So they have to be a 2007 baby to uh, qualify. But anyway, um, so I'm 16 years old. Did I have my driver's license at that time? Yes, I did. I got it the fall before. So my dad signed me up for this thing, right? Because he heard through the grapevine at work that it's a great little program to send your kids off or your teens off to school, get rid of them, get the hell out of the house, let them learn, you know, what it's like to be out of, uh, you know, the parents' home for a summer. And for eight weeks, they haul uh, urban kids not into suburbia, but into the middle of freaking nowhere uh, for eight weeks to essentially work for the Ontario government in slave labor. And I had this anxiety built up around it. I wanted to spend time with my friends. Uh, my best friend at the time just got a 1970 Mustang with a Hearst uh, uh, H pattern shifter. And, uh, you know, we had all these plans to like, do all kinds of cool shit, you know, go to a Sega beach, drive around girls, all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, my dad forwarded that. He said, no, this is my house. This is how this stuff is going to be. You're going to this program. You're going to like it. So, uh, with a lot of protests and a lot of anxiety, I remember my dad took me down to the train station that day, downtown Toronto, uh, union station. And I got on a train for, ended up being, I think it was an eight hour train ride. Um, so it left Toronto and it ended up in a place called Full Yet, Ontario, which was, I don't even remember seeing a stoplight in town where we got off. So we get off in the middle of nowhere, random kids that were on this train with me, who I'd never seen before, uh, got off the, um, I guess they were called team leads or something like that at the time, pick us up, put us in these, um, utility vans, I guess, uh, Ministry of Natural Resource, uh, you know, vans. They drive us another, I don't know, two and a half, maybe three hours further into the middle of nowhere to this encampment. And the first night, one of the kids tried to run away in the middle of nowhere. Um, there's freaking bears, there's cats in the woods, you know, mountain lions and bobcats and shit like that. So this guy was so, you know, like out of it, he wanted to escape. He was like leaving Alcatraz. Um, there was absolutely no way that you're walking in any direction and finding where you're going because it's a logging road. This is how remote it was. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the lake. Lake Weselman, I think is what it was called. So we end up on this camp, and our job for the next eight weeks, we learned that night, was going to be to plant trees, cut weevils out of trees, clear out portage trails, um, clear out uh, overgrown logging roads for bear scat research, all this, all these random things. And be in the middle of nowhere with people that you've never met before, with team leads that you don't know. Um, it was all dudes, because it's not co-ed. It's, it's all, we call them boys because they're teenagers, but they're all teenagers. Uh, there's a couple of team leads, like four of them. And then there's a couple of old, um, like native women that do all the cooking and stuff that when you're in camp so friday to sunday you're in camp and then monday to friday 
uh, sorry, Saturday, Sunday, you're in camp. And then Monday to Friday, you're um, camping in the middle of nowhere doing some shit for the Ministry of Resources for minimum wage. It says your minimum wage that they pay you is on the website. Uh, what the hell is it? It's like sixteen fifty five an hour. And I think at that time they were paying two seventy five an hour less room and board. So you do the math on that. Works out to fucking peanuts. But because you don't spend it on anything, I ended up with like eighteen hundred bucks by the end of the summer or something like that. That was a very alone time in my life. For a sixteen year old to be in a place in the middle of nowhere with people they've never met before, being told that they're going to be doing these jobs for the next eight weeks, which is supposed to be fun, but it feels like a prison sentence at the time. That is some lonely ass shit. That is the most alone I've ever felt, inclusive of when I was like 22 years old and I didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. And my folks were all living in England, including my younger brothers. And I came back to Canada and my girlfriend had just left to go to BC. Uh, and I wasn't going to go anywhere. And I was basically going to sit there on Napster all night on Christmas Day, downloading music or whatever else you know, we were downloading at that time. But that was definitely the most lonely time. Now, the upshot of all of that was, guess what? There was probably 32 other men my age, teenagers, that were all in the exact same boat. So we started talking. Musical interest, they like to do. Most of the time we're sitting there listening to music. We could bring music with us um, or um, playing guitar and jamming, you know, something like that. There was a sauna over by the lake. We would sometimes go down and do a sauna on the weekends and hop in the lake and come back out, but you're covered in leeches. But for the first couple of days, being being around all those people, never felt so alone in my entire life. Um, but it also ended up being one of the best summers of my life too, you know, by the end of the summer. Um, I didn't learn a ton of new skills. I'd always been outdoorsy and Boy Scouts and stuff like that. So um, a lot of the skills that I had sort of were useful at the time. But they taught you how to use, uh, you know, canoes, canoe, canoe rescues, uh, sand mix, which are these tools which have a very sharp blade on them. <laughs> there was even this one uh, camp that we had to stay in, stay in for a week where they're analyzing bear shit. Um, but again, for the first few days, it was, it was cold, it was bugs everywhere, not much going on, but I'll tell you the story, you know, towards the end of it, this is the kind of brotherhood and camaraderie that we formed after eight weeks together. Cause towards the end of the, um, the stay there, let's call it, I don't want to call it incarceration, but towards the end of the stay, can you guys hear me? Okay. Closer to the mic, Rich. Okay. Towards the end of the stay there, we cooked up this idea because you're a teenager, you're like, oh, let's find beer. Oh, well, we can't find beer because we're never going to get that in because it's it's run by these guys over here. And somebody cooked up the idea of taking potato skins. This is how stupid teenagers are, boys. Taking potato skins, drying them out, and then smoking them, and you get high off them or get a rush or something like that. So one of the guys, when they were helping the uh, um, gals, you know, with the meal preps and stuff like that, which we did on the weekend because we had to take turns doing that. Save some of the potato skins, you know, put them in his pocket or his pack or something, put them on top of his um, uh, bed stand because we had this shelving unit where we would store, like, things that matter to us. I got to dig up some pictures. Um, I wish I had them handy. But, um, you know, our rooms were filled with posters of, like, beer and girls and our favorite musical artists. So after a week or two, these things dried out. So this was, you know, towards the end. And again, this is the kind of brotherhood that we ended up forming from nothing, from loneliness to being alone to uh, tight. All right, they're dry. So let's go and have a go at smoking these things and see what happens. Again, remember, these are teenage boys thinking that we're going to get something out of smoking potato skins. So this guy cooks up the idea, let's go over to the gym because there was this hut. It wasn't a gym, it was an old shed. Um, and they had like a bench press made out of wood with some cinder blocks on the end. Very, very basic shit. Like not even, like even people in jail have a far better setup than what we had there. This was like zero. So we're walking towards it and we're talking about, you know, 
how much fun it's going to be to light this up and smoke it and get whatever it is that we're supposed to get off it. And as we're walking into it, one of the leads, who's like a 22 year old uh, guy who had done the program before and come back every summer to sort of like, you know, help with it, was working out in there. And he heard us walking up talking about our bright idea to smoke what we had created and get high off it. Only he didn't know that it was potato skins. So he rats us out, calls the Ontario Provincial Police. There's a big fucking investigation. There's a train of like all these cars that come in because, oh my God, Ministry of Natural Resources kids are, are you know, smoking something to get high, potato skins. And they interrogated us one after the other and they tried to shake up the stories and see if they could get one of us to rat on the other. But the interesting thing is nobody did. It was exactly, you know, we said exactly the same thing. It wasn't his idea or that guy's idea or he cooked it up or, you know, he was going to infuse it with something like that. It was potato skins. This is what we thought. And that was it. And it went away. So interesting going from nothing, people you didn't know, to a brotherhood that wouldn't rat anybody. And it's like, if you're going to take him down, you got to take us all down. In fact, it was like almost like everybody in the camp was like, you know, take us all down. So, you know, in loneliness and being alone, you can sometimes find some of the most amazing brothers that you'll ever come across. Um, especially when you have us versus them moments, you know. One of the things that you learn when you read uh, Jack Donovan's books is, you know, the notion of us versus them. Because we've always operated in tribes and in gangs. That's why when you hear all this like stuff in the media about inclusivity and treat everybody exactly the same and we're no different from one another and um, stop this, stop that, stop you know phobia, racism, whatever isms or whatever it happens to be, it's like that's never going to stop. People are always going to have their preferences. They're always going to have their tribes and their gangs. And it's always going to be an us versus them mindset. That's the way humans are. That's the way we've always been. We're, we're just primates. And most primates, in fact, chimpanzees are even more violent than humans are. But humans and chimps are the most violent primates. Um, and we have our, our tribes and our gang, gang, so it's always going to be that way. So in today's world, we've got a lot of guys that are feeling alone and lonely. What do I do? It's depressing. I find people. I don't know how to meet people. Uh, I don't want to talk to girls or women's history or this toxic narrative of feminism is, is too difficult to deal with. I, I don't get any results in dating apps. I don't want to use dating apps. Cold approach is too much. I don't know where to meet people. I don't know where, where to meet women. I don't know where to meet, you know, good guys, good men that are good being men sort of thing. And it's like this, this real world story of what happened when I was 16 in this junior ranger program shows how how quickly friendships and bonds can form when you spend time together doing over eight weeks. I see a few of you guys trying to pop in for the Q&A segment. The Q&A segment will happen usually about halfway through the show, so around 8.45. I just post the link there you know, for convenience. So if you guys want to wait there, that's cool. You can watch the show from there. I'll get to the uh, questions uh, after the ad reel. So in eight quick, quick weeks, we formed a brotherhood and a lifetime uh, friendship. I know a lot of these guys um, out there still to this day. Um, some of the connections have been made on Facebook, although I don't really use Facebook, but they actually exist. And I think one of the things, you know, one of the lessons that can be taken from the story is that you're going to form real human connections and not feel alone or feel loneliness when you start doing things that you like, when you find ways to enjoy things that you're doing as well in real life. I think. That's the key thing there. Because one of the big mistakes, you know, when I talk to these guys, and they're usually younger men, teens are in the 20s, is that they're caught up in the virtual world, in the internet world. Keep in mind, I grew up in a time where for the first 20 odd years of my life, there was really no internet at all. Nothing. It didn't even exist. Cell phones were just starting to, I remember I had my first cell phone in my 20s, 23, 4, 5, something like that, in my mid-20s. Um, before that, they were bricks that only like uh, you know, Bay Street guys or Wall Street guys would have these big giant phones that probably weighed, you know, five, six pounds, or they were tethered to your car with a, uh, a cord. So, so I think one of the big mistakes that guys are making today is they're looking for connection. They're 
you know, they're looking for friendships they're looking for women you know whatever it happens to be but they're not doing it in the real world they're not doing it in a real life environment because a lot of these younger guys they they grew up in the internet era the, like this generation today this is a big experiment this is the first generation ever in history that has grown up i don't have my phone here because i charge it i keep it out of the room when i'm doing these things but has grown up with a screen that's always been in front of their face handheld device throughout their entire life you know for the most part um they use it when they eat they use it before bed they use it when they get up they use it when they're sitting on the toilet taking a dump they use it at the stoplight you know when they're waiting for the light to turn green they use it all the time and they and they live in this world and if it's not this world it's the computer world or it's the console world playing games video games you know this sort of thing you can form guilds and uh, all kinds of uh clans and tribes like i know video games have that integrated into them because they because they know that communities matter to human beings but you're not forming an in real life connection playing video games chatting with your little headphones on shit talking you know the kids or trying to coordinate your attack and you know you know the raid or whatever it is that you're doing so don't think for a minute that, that, that that's a substitute because i think that's one of the big mistakes one of the big lies one of the comforting lies that we tell you ourselves and the young men today are telling themselves to believe in because that doesn't equal friendship it doesn't that's that's going to get very lonely now for guys that are introverted i think this is a little bit easier i think guys that are you know they're extroverted it's it's you know quite a bit harder but you should be comfortable in your own company right if you're not comfortable in your own company you're going to feel alone and lonely. You need to get comfortable with yourself as a companion. Right? Um, I can do a couple of days without any contact with anybody very comfortably. I can spend hours writing. I can, I can spend hours watching uh, videos. I can spend hours playing console games if I wanted to. Project something with my hands. Um, because of, because I've developed the ability to be comfortable with myself. I also know where to find good men that are good at being men based on the things that I've done in the past. One of the chapters in my book, I talk about why men should own a motorcycle. I'll get the damn book. You guys get the damn book. The second edition is available. Get it. Okay. If you haven't read it, it's, it's been updated and revised. Um, there's there's a chapter in that book that talks about getting a motorcycle why i think all men should as a rite of passage own a mo motorcycle at some point in their life people get all worked up about this not everybody but i mean i've legit had angry emails from you tell people to get motorcycles that's irresponsible and people are gonna die <laughs> okay but you're also gonna have a lot of fun and the chances of something bad happening to you are relatively low if you're a good rider and you keep your head on a swivel and you ride with other guys and you do it intentionally i'll tell you one thing anywhere you go with a motorcycle if you're touring the country you will always have a friend there's always cafes there's always meetup spots there's always somewhere and it doesn't matter if it's cruisers if it's sport bikes naked bikes doesn't matter what it is that you ride enduros dirt bikes you will never have a problem meeting cool people because you already do something cool yourself and you can you can do that together there was at least two or three spots um in the greater toronto area that i would frequent sometimes by myself i would just hop on my bike and she's fuck it I'm, I'm going out my girlfriend would have pissed me off or i don't know maybe i didn't have friends to hang out with that night or they were busy or working or some shit. i just get on my bike throw some gas in the tank go down to the cafe um we used to go down to this one in uh lawrence if you guys live in toronto you're gonna you're gonna have to remind me of the name in the uh, chat but there was one down on lawrence east of the don valley parkway um and it was all bikes there all the time and you just go there you, you, you grab your coffee start shooting the shit talking to guys going for rides and rips you would always meet somebody new right we never sat behind a screen or looked at a handheld device hoping to make a connection. It was it was going out and moving and doing something. You know, 
humans are nomadic hunter gatherers, right? It's only in recent history, in the last thousand odd years, that we've evolved more into agriculture and you know setting up cities and urban centers and you know aqueducts and water and sewage and electricity and all this sort of stuff. That's all. Of, you know, these are all very very modern conveniences. Uh, sorry, I. I digress. Agriculture is 10,000 years old. You know, like a lot of these notions like marriage are 1,000 or 2,000 years old. You get the idea, though. But a lot of these things are very, very new. But when you go back to the nomadic hunter-gatherer age, which is how we live for a very long period of time, throughout much longer than we have left today, we would go out together in groups, probably hiding in the bushes, looking for shit to throw spears at, sitting there side by side, Yo, uh, Lothar of the Hill People. Yes, Rich of the uh, Unplugged Alpha Tribe. And you'd, and you'd have a conversation, you know, looking for whatever it is that you had to kill to try to bring back and stalk it and coordinate, maybe hand signals. This is, this is why today we feel lonely. The loneliness that you feel is a prison that you build for yourself. You've chosen that life, you know, um, people often complain like, oh, Rich, you're out of touch. You've got the cars, the money, the successful businesses, blah, 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 and all this sort of stuff. You don't understand, you know, how the world works, this, that, and the other thing. Maneuver. You don't like your, you know, your job or whatever it is you're doing, leave and go to another one. You don't like the people that you're hanging around with, move. Last time I checked, there's like, we don't live in walled cities. There's nothing stopping you from going somewhere else, right? Yet, anyway, that might be coming. The government might be bringing that down at some point in the future, but as it stands today, maneuver, right? Why, why do we have to complicate things unnecessarily? Oh, I can't do this because of that. Okay, well, you want to sit there in misery and wallow in self-pity and play the victim mindset? Or do you want to do something to change it, right? If you go to the gym, ask somebody for a spot. I've honestly, probably in the last five years, now that I think about it, even before this pandemic, even before all that bullshit, people didn't really ask for spots. When I was a kid, like when I was in my teens and my 20s, if you were at the gym and you couldn't go, you know, with your workout partner, your buddy or your roommate or whatever, anybody in the gym would do, chicks included. I mean, you wouldn't generally ask a chick to help you, you know, spot you on the bench press if you're doing three plates or some shit like that but anybody in the gym is your buddy hey you know i could use a spot over here you mind? yeah no problem we finish one over here and they come over and they spot you right that's that's a lost art you know ask for a spot in the gym i need a spot man i'm going for a pr I'm looking for big bag. you know this big bad boy over here ask you know talk to people engage them you know they're not going to go out of their way generally speaking to want to get to know you if you're the one that's feeling lonely if you're the one that doesn't have a network if you're the one that doesn't have a tribe or a like-minded group of friends you can create it but you're going to have to be interested in other people you're also going to have to be interesting you're going to have to have some interesting hobbies and some things going on in your life you know while i was setting up for this uh podcast I was looking at some numbers around how men handle, uh, you know, loneliness and stuff. And it's like, you know, some of the stuff I talked about in my book as well, too. You know, the, the incarceration uh, rate for men is much, much higher than women for the exact same crime. In fact, women get off much more than, you know, men do, obviously. Um, and, you know, things like um, guys self-deleting themselves. Uh, I like to use the phrase taking permanent steps to a temporary problem in their life. And men are three times more likely to do this than women. Men are 10 times more likely to do this than women in a divorce. Guys generally suffer in a lot of silence. So if you know somebody right now, and you probably do, colleague, coworker, friend from the gym, guy from the dojo, maybe a guy you ride bikes with, whatever your hobbies or interests happen to be, family member, cousin, whoever it happens to be, you probably know somebody right now that's going through a divorce or dealing with some difficulties in his relationship. Give him a call. Shoot him a text. 
shoot him a text. Hey, man, just wanted to check in, you know, how things going. I know shit's tough with the whole uh, breakup or the untying of the knot or whatever happens to be. Just do a check-in, you know? Being interested and being interesting is part of forming human connections. And again, this is coming from somebody that's an introvert, right? Uh, let's go through my notes here. Get comfortable with being alone. Yeah, I mean, and again, that 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 doesn't mean playing, you know, 12 hours of video games by yourself and be comfortable with that. That's that's not a productive use of time being alone. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would also get very, very clear on what it is that you're looking for from a friend, from a woman, a job. It doesn't matter what it is in life, guys. Get clear on what it is that you're looking for. <clears throat> Get very, very clear on what it is that you're looking for and only allow those people. I would I would rather be by myself than, than, than to surround myself with shitty people, shitty friends, shitty women, any of those things. I, I just don't have, maybe it's because I've gotten older and I just don't give a fuck anymore, right? But I think, you know, when you're younger, you tend to make more concessions. It's like, ah, I've been friends with, you know, Mike since high school. So what if? You know, somebody caught him jerking off in a plant or something like that, right? You kind of make up these like weird excuses, you know. You're going to get out of life what you tolerate, right? You're going to tolerate mediocre people. If you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. You know, I've said this many times, say it again. Put yourself in rooms where you're not the smartest guy in the room. Put yourself in events or extracurriculars or sporting, you know, gigs where you're not the best, you're not the smartest, you're not the most competent. Especially if you want to learn and you want to network, you don't want to be lonely. I've never felt lonely at the dojo in any of the classes. And like legit, I went there probably thousands of times, right? Over the four, now, four odd years that I was, uh, you know, training, doing crop, doing uh, boxing, kick, all that sort of stuff. And there was almost always somebody new. Hey, Rich, how you doing? Nice to meet you. All right, you know, because they would always pair you off and you'd have to go and do, do some exercise. Very, very easy to, you know, make contacts and open the doors when you get out of your own head in your own house. But if you're sitting there on your screens, watching TV shows or sports, playing video games and all that, you don't allow yourself the opportunity to go out there and find interesting people doing interesting things and being interesting yourself. So again, you want to get very, very clear on what you want from a network, what you want from a friendship, what you want from a woman or women, whatever that happens to be, and being fastidious about getting rid of the losers. I get mad when I say get rid of losers. Hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even going to apologize for it. You need to get rid of the losers in your life. You know who they are. You probably have people in your life still. Again, well, I've been friends with so-and-so since high school. So what? Really, so what? I think there's maybe two people that I still talk to from high school. And even then, it's very like sporadically and randomly. Like we shoot a text to each other. Something comes up. You know, there's a picture sent. Hey, we should get together soon, blah, blah, blah. But you never really do because you live so far apart. But these guys are cool, right? Like I keep in touch with them because they're successful. And we did awesome stuff when we were younger. And we're doing awesome stuff today in our own realms, in our own you know, world sort of thing. But it's okay, you know, let people go that are mediocre. Let them go. Just You don't have to make an announcement. Hey, we're not going to be friends anymore. Just don't respond to them, right? Lose their phone number. So get clear on what you want from your friends. Get clear on what you want from the network. Get clear on what you want from a woman or women, whatever that happens to be. I can't emphasize this enough, guys. Stay away from shit people. I really can't. You need to create a vacuum, okay? Whatever it is that you're filling your time with that's making you feel lonely, you need to create a vacuum so that it can fill with something else. Vacuums fill by osmosis, right? You spend, if you take 24 hours in a day, let's say you take eight to nine of them sleeping, you take eight of them working, you take an hour or two commuting, doing miscellaneous things, grabbing a bite to eat, uh, you know, picking up some groceries, stuff like that. What are you doing with that leftover time, the extra few hours that you've got left in your day, right? 
because if you're pissed off about being lonely or feeling lonely or feeling alone and you're spending your like i can tell you exactly what your problem is by what you're doing with your spare time you spend it watching sports what would you expect go play sports join a co-ed you know sports league murder ball ball hockey volleyball whatever it happens to be anything right i've done all of these things they're great exercise they're a great way to network there's always a hey let's grab a beer or a drink or some wings after this sort of thing there's usually women involved you know just do a co-ed one um and because you know it's it's athletic they're generally fit and reasonably attractive you know for the most part you know so trade watching sports for playing a sport you like video games you like playing video games okay fine maybe a little bit of them but all the time <laughs> i remember i was at a hospital once and um i was skiing and i fucked up my leg i thought it was broken or could have been uh shattered you know the uh shin or whatever so i go to the fucking hospital i'm sitting there waiting for two three hours four hours go by just you know there's all these moms coming in with their two-year-old with a fucking dot on their back and a sniffle and they think they're going to die so in canada healthcare, you know mostly free anyway <laughs> not great but mostly free so i'm sitting there for three four hours in emerge with what i think is a broken leg and they put me into the room b and sitting beside me in the next room with a curtain so you can hear everything so the doctor goes to that kid first because he was there before me all right so why are you here today what's wrong i can't feel my knees doc. Well, what do you mean you can't feel your knees well, I was sitting there playing a Warcraft raid for 12 hours and my legs, I just can't feel them. I don't know what's wrong with them. The feeling hasn't come back. And she's like, fucking move, buddy. Move your legs, move your body. They've gone numb because you're sitting your ass in a chair doing nothing, playing video games for 12 hours. Why are you wasting my time? That's not what she said, but I could, that's what I'm thinking. And I could tell by the tone of her voice, she was probably thinking the exact same thing. But this is what happens, right? You get caught up in these worlds, these online worlds, you know, the metaverses of the, you know, the world today. You get all caught up in it, leveling up your character. Oh, well, if I play one more raid, then I can get that armor that I want and I'll get 37 gold pieces so I can get this special item and it'll improve my stamina by plus three points and minimize my defenses by this amount. And we, and we start calculating all this shit. And trust me, I know, because I used to play, you know, these geeky games all the time too. And then you're like leveling up a character to the best it can possibly be in a video game. You got this dragon, blow your whistle and the dragon comes flying over and you can do all this cool shit on it. You're a, you're a wizard, warrior, whatever it is you want in that video game world. But in real life, you're down here. Level up your real life character. Spend the same amount of time, effort, resources leveling up your real life character, right? Increase the amount of money that you make, increase your physical conditioning, increase your competency skills in combat. These are all things that are useful. Having a strong, healthy body, broad shoulders, narrow waist, muscular sort of build. You know, you're interesting, you're funny, you've got a network, you do cool shit. Do you ride a motorcycle? No. Do you do rallies? Do you have nice cars? No. Do you play hockey? I don't care what it is. Yet, you know, if you're going to find yourself in a position to be interested in and be interesting, doing it in a virtual world is not going to get you what you want in the real world. And that's just a cold, hard truth about it, man. I've done both. I've done both. I've seen both. And a far better use of your time, do it for yourself. I would, I would probably have a lot more money today and made a lot fewer mistakes and been further ahead had I not wasted a lot of the time that I had in virtual worlds, in virtual friendships, in shitty friendships, keeping shitty friends around, keeping shitty women around. Um, because it's it just boils down to raising your standards, guys. That's all it is. When you set your standards higher, when you when you raise the bar for yourself, when you raise those standards higher for you, the outcome in your life, the dividends paid are just exponential. They're off the freaking chart. You don't have to be lonely or alone or any of those things. There's there's lots and lots of really, really good men out there that are good at being men that you can form friendships and bonds with. Look, the reason why I created my own community, 
you know, through the channel work that I do is because people were always saying, hey, let me introduce you to this. I've got this. I've got that. I'd like to hang out with you. Let's talk about this. And, you know, I'll tell you something. The guys that I've paid attention to and the guys that I've become friends with that are integrated in my community that are, that are invaluable at this point are the guys that are interesting that I'm also interested in and we do cool shit together. And I mean, the stuff that I've posted on social media, like anywhere out there that you might've seen, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Like that's just a highlight reel. You know, the kinds of stuff that we hang out and do is just phenomenal. It's the same thing with women too, right? Decide what you want. You want multiple women in your life? Do you want a woman in your life? Do you want no women in your life? Do you want to deal with it on a short-term basis or arm's length basis, dating only? You know, whatever it is you want to call. There's, there's, there's still lots of good women out there. They're not all obese, purple-haired, disagreeable, angry, mean, um, man-haters. They're not. There's a lot of those ones out there, but you don't have to spend time with them. You get to decide who you spend time with. You get to decide who you invite into your life. You get to decide who you hang out with. And making concessions by having lower standards is going to get you to shit. It's just going to get you nasty shit. Um, let me just see what I got on here. There was a little chat thing that popped in. Jake said, um, uh, people almost always mirror your energy. Quiet and standoffish, they are too. Talkative and receptive, they usually will be too. Lead by example. And so Jake's a really good example. So my editor um, was in town start of November. We had to um, do the audio recording for the second edition. So it's an edit right now. It should be out in a week or two, hopefully on ACX. Um, Jake's about a couple hours away also part of my community. My editor was visiting from the UK and on a weekday, because he's flying out on like a Thursday, like I had a commitment that day. Um, on a weekday, he's like, yeah, I'm going to drive out a couple hours to have lunch with you, right? Making the effort to do something like that. Um, again, find interesting people, be interested in them and do cool shit together. Um, raise your standards in all areas. You know, you, you raise your standards, you're always going to get better results. If you set the bar higher, you're always, always going to get better results for yourself. Or you're going to miss the bar, and then you're going to try harder. Simple as that. Um, yeah, you like chess, join a chess club, play poker with a bunch of other guys, but not online. Do it in real life, right? Gamify your life, absolutely. Um, smoke potato skin. Somebody's going to make a t-shirt with that at some point. You'll see. Yeah. You get the idea? All right. Let's do some uh, Q&A. Um, the link to call in is pinned at the top of the YouTube live chat. So let me just real quick. Uh, this is the YouTube link. I'm going to put this on all the time. So if you're watching on the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Twatches, the LinkedIn's, whatever, click that link, come over to YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the thumbs up for the algorithm. Thank you. And then if you want to ask me a question, you can ask me anything uh, tonight. The StreamYard link's there. Just make sure you got a good connection and um, come on in. Let's chop uh, it up. But you don't need to throw yourself a pity party. You don't need to, you know, disengage from the world. You don't need to go and live in a cabin in the woods unless you want to. Um, and even then, you know, you can have the company of a pet. You'll never feel lonely if you have a dog. I don't have a dog right now. I, I'm too busy to take care of a, a pet. But I've had uh, a dog, you know, in the past. And you'll never feel alone or lonely with a pet around. Dog, you know, they, there's a reason why they call a dog, you know, man's best friend, right? It's great that way. All right, let's do this now. I'm going to drop, well, sorry, the link's already dropped, so hit that. I'm going to run the ad reel, Can come back in like two minutes. Just going to take a quick break, have a sip, and uh, let's get into the Q&A. So if you have a question, click that link. Be right back.
This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China in plastic bottles, Mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible, bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. Then I use tactical soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top YouTube comment of all my videos. Now let's get on with the show. All right, so we got a few people waiting here for a question. Again, if you guys wanna ask me anything, lines are open. Uh, just hit the StreamYard link pinned at the top of the live chat. Um, let's see here, we got Ryan. Let's see what Ryan's got for us here. Ryan, what's happening, man? You got your line muted. Just open up the mic. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on, man? Oh, great, how are you? Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, uh, I've been on the show before, um, and uh, uh, I just want to say, great, I'm glad you're doing all this work and improving the lives of many men out there. Um, I am, uh, just to recap, I'm, t I'm 28 years old now. Uh, I manage a few businesses, transportation uh, in the U.S., and uh, uh, I'm pretty, you know, financially stable um and i've been i would say spinning plates since i was pretty much 17 till now and uh, i'm in a, a specific uh, uh predicament uh i'm with this uh now she's a, she is a 21 year old vietnamese uh international student that's studying here uh in America, um, and I've been with her for 14 months now, mm -hmm. and I'll be honest, she's been really what good. Like, I went through your red flags a million times trying to find something. You know, the only one thing that I would, I, I don't know if it's a red flag, but anytime we're together, she's like playfully like biting me or pinching me or things like that. You know, some, I feel like some girls do that like playfully, but I don't know if that's considered violent or, or hissy fit or something like that. But besides that, she's been, you know, really, really good. Um, mm -hmm. my, my problem, um, long story short, I gave her on, Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. On our one year anniversary, I gave her uh, a gift called like the love book, or it's like a hundred pages of our, you know, our dates and our experiences and, and, you know, the um, love book. Yeah. I don't know. Is that yeah. what it's called? Yeah. It's just called looking it up. Book. Yeah. You can like customize it, you know, it's like you by know, Lenore it's Kandel. I, f no, no, it, you can customize. It's called love book. You can customize like the characters and each page and you know things like that okay yeah so she loved loved it a lot every page i put i printed a picture of us on a date and you know, we went out to the beach and we did a bunch we had we had an amazing year let's just put it that way okay now the problem is her mom is this the love book is this what you're talking about this thing here correct yes correct okay yes. um 
long story short, so her mom saw this book after I gave it to her, like after two or three days, and her mom realized that I did care about her a lot. You know, I protect her, you know, and do love her. And when she realized that, when she got home that day, her mom almost immediately asked her, when are you going to marry him? Mm -hmm. And I went out to dinner with her parents, her family, her sister, her parents, friends. They don't know much English, but, you know, the whole whole conversation is around uh, you know us getting married and and uh you've known her for how long a year and a half a year and two months now okay and she's how old 21 yeah she just she yeah she turned 21 yes and your age again you said you're 28 I'm 28 correct okay so what's the question here what's the ask so her family's been hounding her to get married for very specific reasons it's one to get citizenship and to to uh, establish themselves as a citizen in in America and to potentially start business. Now her family is very well off. I would say very well off. They her parents own a, a fish distribution company back in Vietnam. So I could only assume that that they're doing well. Her mother. Sorry, did you say that they both live here? The parents both live here? Yes, correct. So who's running the business in Vietnam while they while they both live here? Uh, they travel back and forth. So they, okay. they have people working there, fa other family members, and they come visit her, their two daughters here in America, and they go back and forth every two, three months. or, so, or every, Oh, sorry, every four, three to four months. Mm -hmm. uh, now... Uh, they want to speed up the process of their daughter getting citizenship and in turn get me getting married to her. And they were even willing to pay for the prenuptial agreement, the marriage, the whole nine yards for me to marry into the family. I already protected. That's the way it's generally been around the world, by the way, is yeah. the bride's family pays for that. Yeah, uh, they're very traditional. She is very traditional. You know, she was willing to pay even out of her pocket for like lawyers and things mm -hmm. like that and for like the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and they were even willing to potentially put their assets half into my name as well, just to quote unquote m legitimize the marriage. And she, they would use like our history the past year and two months as you know, for the citizen paperwork and, and, you know, things like that. The whole, I, they even talked to a, we even talked to a uh, immigration attorney about all this stuff. They said, yes, yes, yes. Everything should work out in about a year and a half from now. Mm -hmm. So technically speaking, I don't have anything to lose. And I know with your book, you know, smart men don't marry and all my assets is protected. I, I put it in trust. I have my property, one of my main property homesteaded. I have everything protected with the prenuptial. And she's willing to change her name and all of these things. And mm -hmm. I keep reading back, like, any red flags, any things, you know, besides her, you know, small hissy fits and her biting me from time to time playfully. Besides that, you know, <laughs> I'm just like... I don't okay, know Ryan, yeah. we got to get moving along because I got a lot of people waiting to hop in. So let's get yeah. to the question here. So what's the question? You want me to co-sign this marriage? I mean, I know you're going to say no, but if you were in my shoes, would what would you do? Well, look, I'm not in your shoes. I'm much yeah. older than you and I've already been married and I don't have any reason to get married. Yeah. You don't need to get married to have children. Do you want to have children? Uh yeah, it was yeah, it was part of the conversation. Yeah. Okay, so she's looking for marriage to get citizenship. Like you understand that, right? Correct. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes. Like this is her main drive. If it's not you, she'll find another guy that will marry her and get her citizenship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've only known her for a year and two months. You said. Correct. I I would give it a good year and a half to two years minimum before you yeah. even entertain the conversation. I would actually push it back two years. I would 
Yeah. I would give it a, a couple of years to see what she's made of, see what her family's really like. How much time yeah. have you spent with her family? A lot, quite. I would say, four occasions. I went. I went to their uh, Thanksgiving mm -hmm. dinner, mm -hmm. and I did have the same conversation with them. Uh, you know, these things take time. I would suggest two years. I even told them this, and mm -hmm. they agreed with me. They didn't. I, the main focus, the main reason, they were keep pounding her to get married. She doesn't even particularly want to at this moment, but they were keep you know, forcing her to, you know, get Let me married. ask you a question on your one year anniversary. You bought her the love book. What, what did she get you? Um, she got me like two cakes, balloons. She got me, uh, what you call it? She got me a new wallet. She got me like, Oh, so she, she periodically give me a lot of, gifts throughout the time one time we we were we, uh, we we work out from time to time and i had these like old shoes mm -hmm. you know and she was like oh she's like what's your shoe size i'm like 11 she's you didn't i did not think much of it two days later she got me brand new adidas uh, uh gym okay. Shoes and I, like, okay she like she have genuine burning desire for you i would say yes you've they, read my book right yes yes so as I describe in the book, right, there's women that are enthusiastic for you, like they're promoters, they're indifferent, or they're detractors. Uh -huh. You're saying that she's a promoter. Yes. 100% without any question. She wants to spend time with me more often than I could give her, okay. you know, and anytime I can't spend time with her, you know, she get a hissy fit. But mm -hmm. besides that, you know, she... Love well, every time we're together. I literally just like dropped her off earlier too, and mm -hmm. you know we're kissing, making out, and she wanted to spend okay. more time. Look, man, her. like she sounds like a genuinely nice person, uh -huh. but you've only known her for a year and a bit. Yeah, slow it down, turn off the afterburners. Let's see what she's like at the two-year mark. Then, if you still feel the feel the need to put a ring on her finger and you know get married, do that. Uh, I mean. Um, I don't know if there's any other way for her to get citizenship aside from that, but that seems like the easiest, most convenient way to do it. Yeah, yeah. She's but wait. Also, yeah, yeah. She has, uh, so apparently she has a four year sponsorship period as an international student. How long so has she been here? She's been here since 2017. Okay. And but, but she still have three and a half years from to, from now. How many years was she in the States before you met her? Two. So for two, two years, yeah. she was here b before you had met her. Do you have any idea what her notch count might be? <laughs> I was her first. You were first. Yeah. Okay, my friend, you have uh, you have a good candidate here for a long term relationship, or if you want to wife her up, that hey, you know, you want to take on the risk. That's entirely up to you. But I would wait a couple years, two years, year and a half to two years, minimum year and a half to two years before you even have the conversation. You know, put it off a little bit. Say, hey, look, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Fish Factory from Vietnam. I really dig your daughter's vibe. We have a good time. Uh, you know, I've yeah. got this going on. She's got that going on. Mm -hmm. This is a bridge that we can cross, you know, yeah. in the future. But not right now. we got too much stuff happening. Well, and then just watch how she behaves. Watch how the family behaves. Spend time with them. Because keep in mind, you're going to, like, you're going to be inviting not just her into your life, but her family into your life as well. Yeah, her family really like me like when i say like me like the first yeah, but you've time only I met them four times right like you've only been with them on four occasions spend yeah, like spend that, that's as, yeah, that's spend as, four days straight with them see if you guys all still get along real well yeah um right because there's cultural differences there too oh yeah i could tell at that point i felt like you know her parents were treating her like like a property to use you know yeah, like a, like a traditional, you know. Well, that's the way it is in those cultures, though, right? So just slow it down, see what she's made of, see if that's what you want to do. Not because she wants it, because she wants citizenship. See if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Right. Once you've sussed her out, and you know you sussed her family out, and see if it goes well for you. Okay. So after a two the two year or maybe three year mark, and everything still. Really a well. two-year vetting period is more than sufficient to see what she's made out of. 
what right. what in your opinion are there any risks at that point after marriage yeah all the risks that i talked about in the chapter of my book about why smart men don't get married when you get married you expose yourself to all those risks unnecessarily ryan every single divorce lawyer that i know will never ever get married and even if they have been married in the past they'll never get married again in the future right especially in a place where it's hostile towards men right um you might want to go to the uh national parents what's it called there's a report card that's online what state do you live in uh i'd rather not say but i i live in the u.s okay okay so you can look up the information for yourself then but there's a report card i think it's called the national parents organization or something to that regard but it's a grading system where they evaluate the states based on how friendly they are to fathers in divorce the, uh, the state i am yeah i checked that or yeah, the state i am in is very uh, uh give more rights to fathers i would i would yeah. be in one of the top two states like not even the top 10 like be in the top oh. two states so if that's what you want to do uh -huh. then prepare yourself set up for it live in that state Make sure you get to know her and her family real well. Make sure that the only reason why you're doing it is because it's it's for you, because it's cultural for you, it's religious for you, because you want to have children, because you want to bring up kids that way sort of thing. Not for her, not for her citizenship. You understand? Yeah. Cool? Yeah, cool. All right, my man. Let you go. That is a interesting scenario. Also as interesting is the love book. I still have this opened up here on my other screen. And... Uh, this is something that I would not use, <laughs> although I could see why younger men would use it. It's a, uh, it's a $60 book and you can customize the book as he states with, uh, whatever is you want personal, uh, personalized father's day, love book, uh, why I love you, personalized anniversary gifts, why I love you, personalized anniversary gift, love book. They also have them customized to religions. Um, yeah, I mean, I could see, like, look, <laughs> it's endearing. <laughs> let's go with that word. It's endearing. Um, all right, let's see what else we got here. Um, again, guys, if you want to call in and ask a question, the link is pinned at the top of the live chat on uh, YouTube. But, uh, you know, to Ryan's question, she seems like a decent and a good candidate for mother stock, although... Um, I understand why she wants the uh, marriage to come along with that to get the green card, but she seems like a genuinely nice gal. It's just a year and two months, way too fast. Slow that shit down. Um, I got a guy here. Uh, it says lawyer act or account. Let's see if this one is working. Hey, lawyer? Hey, Rich. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? What can I do for you tonight? Uh, actually, I did a sponsored video from you perhaps maybe six, seven months ago. It was about me dating a single mother who was older than me. Um, and I don't know if you recall it or, or not, uh, but I was a I lawyer. I do so many of them. Uh, you, you, yeah. You're going to have to refresh me. I'm a lawyer I living in Sudbury. Well, I said Northern Ontario at the time, but a lawyer and a CFA, an Indian guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Vaguely, yeah. The skinny fat guy. And then you kind of give me a backhanded slap when i when i said that part to you <laughs> okay okay yeah. okay so what's going on so what's the update uh so uh i took your advice broke up with her hit the gym um a couple months went by and then she came back she kind of gave me the whole spiel of wanting to get back together and how you know um i was wrong about what i thought and my analysis etc 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 and she was turning 40, so she decided that, you know, she was having a bit of a, a difficult time with it, so she wanted to go on a How trip. How old are you again? I'm um, 36. Okay. Um, And so, against my better judgment, I did it, took her on the trip, went down to the Dominican Republic, and, you know, just was just a horrible trip. Um, Why was it a horrible know? trip? Well... You know, I anticipated that she would be very grateful for me paying for the entire thing mm -hmm. and kind of paying for a, a sitter for her daughter at the time. Um, I thought that she would, you know, reflect that with like, you know, being intimate or, you know, being like touchy-feely all over me. But she just kind of seemed like she was owed the trip. 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, just kind of like, even at the time when I brought it up, you know, even she was like, I don't owe you anything. You know, it's up to you to set the mood and it's up to you to create the environment and, and you know, whatever. And it's on mm -hmm. me. And obviously that wasn't going to happen because I was incredibly frustrated at the time and kind of just doing it. So she comes back and, you know, now she's going for a weekend away for a death of her stepmother. Okay. And the stepmother is close friends with her baby daddy. Okay. And so, you know, I kind of told her that I wouldn't be comfortable with that. And her response was obviously pretty, you know, kind of like just not really interested or worried about it. And mm -hmm. it's kind of delved now into just like indifference whenever I talk to her. And I don't really think she had genuine burning desires anyway mm -hmm. um, for the relationship. That's why I sent the sponsored video content. What was the so title obviously... of that video, by the way? Uh, if you can recall, uh, like what I titled it. Uh, I could I could take a look, but uh, I'd have to get out of this browser. But it was like lawyer, uh, lawyer and single mother, or something like that. Lawyer, um, lawyer dating a single mother. I forget. Uh, I forget right now. It's favorited in my YouTube, but I'm just on the browser. Okay, let me see if I can just look it up, just so the, just yeah. for reference for the people watching. Yeah. Uh, but carry on. Yeah, and so. Um, I have, I guess my question Single mom is versus it, tax lawyer. Is that it? Yeah, that's, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. So if you guys want to watch his original request, it was over a year ago. The title of the video on the entrepreneurs and cars channel is single mom versus tax lawyer. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I guess my question is two part. The first part is, um, I asked it in the video. I just have a, a difficult time when it comes to, and I know that notch count is, is a, a thing in your book and I've read your book and it's a yeah. great book, nice. but, um, it's like the world kind of shoves that against you and they they say kind of you know that the past is the past even she says you know i learned and you know just because i did one thing doesn't mean i need to do another and even when i spoke to her about it i said you know even if all you did was hold hands as the guy that's you know putting the ring on the finger i want to have the best hand holding you know i want to have mm -hmm. the, the dirt and whatever so like you know I, I don't but she just never sees it that way so i guess the first thing is is that you know, when you get to 36 or 37 or whatever, when you're reaching this age and you're looking around and everybody's had these experiences, one, are is the girl even going to tell you the truth? And if she's not going to tell you the truth, how do you know you're getting the best out of her? Or is just genuine burning desire enough? Or how do you kind of balance that? Or is the best doesn't even matter? Or, you know, like, because she's had threesomes and she had, you know, resort worker things and stuff like that. And she did things with them that she's never done with me and unwilling mm -hmm. to do with me. And mm -hmm. then the second part of the question is, is that, the reason when she came back, I, I was interested in, in getting back together with her was one, the, the fear of the baby daddy, but o more kind of overarching all of that is just, you know, I feel like a failure if I can't get the same reaction out of her that these people that are, you know, in my opinion, less successful than me, um, right. you know, and it just eats me up. Like I can't sleep, I can't eat. Mm. And it just really impacts my self-worth, you know, and like if I get going in the gym, it kind of destroys that. Um, and uh, I, I just, I, you know, I'm kind of lost when it comes to that kind of stuff. And it's like, I just, like, I, I hate the way I even look in the mirror, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I just really, it, it's just been tough, you know, and it's just like she, it, she's just kind of like a, a symbol for it. You know, she could go, but it's kind of like, it's just having a big impact on me. So you've known this chick for how long? Uh, it's going to be like uh, two years soon in like a couple months. So you met her when she was about 38? Yeah, exactly. Do you want to have any kids? Yeah, and she wants to have kids too. But dude, she's 40. Yeah, again, she, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, again, it's I, like the second part of the question was the reason I'm, I think I'm even here is just to kind of prove to myself that I, I you know, I'm good enough because I was a loser in high school. I, I'd said it in my video it's yeah. like I, I didn't get nothing and i didn't i lost my virginity at 25 and even that wasn't you know with a girl that wanted to like like she consent but i just mean wanted to like you know she didn't yeah. really feel like she was like you know I, I didn't feel she was that interested in me and um i don't know it just i feel like maybe that's what's causing me there because it's like i just i can't well, believe you've got, it. Um, you don't have a very strong opinion of yourself right you know as far no. as like any guy that gets involved with an older woman that's a single mother doesn't have a strong opinion of, of their worth in the sexual marketplace. Right. So we can call that what it is because otherwise you'd have better options and you wouldn't be hung up over this gal who 
you know, if we're being honest, isn't the best choice for anybody, really. I mean, especially in a guy in your situation, like if you're a successful tax lawyer, 36, never been married, doesn't have any kids, uh, is open to the idea of, of siring, you know, his own children and passing on his name and, and name and bloodline and DNA. And you're dealing with a chick that you fly down to the Dominican, you pay for babysitting for her kid and get attitude from her while you're on the trip, uh, you know, um, contempt. Um, they say that the countdown to the end of a relationship is contempt. The greater yeah, the contempt video. and the more frequent the contempt is, the the shittier the experience you're going to have dealing with her, you know, yeah. during that time. And it doesn't sound like she's in your frame. It doesn't sound like she's a compliment to your life. It doesn't sound like she's got genuine burning desire for you. It also, you know, when you look at her on, on paper, she's not a great candidate for, uh, you know, Ms. Lawyer account type of material. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess the question I have for you is why are you dealing with her? Um, I mean, I you just, got rid of her and then you took her back. Yeah. Well, I mean, one, she's attractive. Obviously, most single mothers sure. that, that are looking to. So she's attractive. So I'm attracted to her. B, I get no luck on the, the market. I'm not like the tallest guy. And yeah. You know, I, I just get no luck on the on the on the apps, and it's my social life is what it is. I live in a very I live in Sudbury. It's not like a yeah. big town, right? So, um, and you know, it's kind of like it's like single and mothers. Let's be honest, Sudbury doesn't have the best caliber of women either. Yeah, you know, but they the, but they're there. Like there 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 are women there, but it's there like, are yeah. But I mean, yeah. as it, see, as women get older and. You know they deal with more guys there there's higher probabilities of baggage higher probabilities of being single mothers single mothers with multiple kids from multiple fathers yeah like you know, like the baggage part of it is also a real issue you know with it too because as a 36 year old guy that's successful working as a tax lawyer you can legit date very comfortably 25 year olds right you know 36 they, like it's not, not a even big look my way yet they're not looking your way yet. So what do you need to do to get them to look your way and express interest in you? I have no idea. I could, I know the gym is key, but it's not mm -hmm. going to make me taller. No. It ain't going to make me handsomer. Like, How tall are like, you? 5'8". Uh, okay, well, it's not short. No. Okay. But in Sudbury, surrounded by, you know, Caucasians, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm on the lower end, yeah. Yeah, but there's lots of good-looking brown guys out there, right? So what's stopping you from being a good-looking, you know, smooth brown guy? confidence in the gym i would say maybe so, style yeah so there you go style confidence in the gym do you pick up any combat sports do you like to fight uh, my, a good that? friend of mine um fought in the ufc a couple times he's been telling me to join his his okay. mma gym yeah like what but do you do I, for I, interesting hobbies uh well i mean i i, I play sports uh, i play soccer i i i cook but not really more than that i'm like more of an athlete like i'll you know i'll I'll work and then I'll just go play for sports. Like I'll play any sport and okay. I'll join any sport, but yeah. Right. But I mean, uh, like the reason why I'm asking you, like as far as your interesting hobbies go, because if you're not getting women to look your way, that's, I mean, the first thing is like the optics of attraction, right? So you can deal with that by developing a more masculine physique, you know, style, yeah. haircut, you know, clothing that fits better, stuff like that, obviously. Yeah. But then beyond that, if you, if you capture their attention, but you're boring and it's like, the extent of this of the stuff that you do for fun is playing sports. You really can't invite a chick into your life to watch you play sports. Yeah. Like even even if you watch the Beckham documentary on Netflix, yeah, you can see Posh Spice getting bored watching one of the best footballers in the world playing football, even yeah. at the World Series level with stadiums filled with you know people watching him perform. You see her get bored of it, so. You have to invite women into your life to do something interesting, right? So what sort of hobbies, you know, does that look like? Do you like boating? Do you like flying? Do you like riding motorcycles? Do you like travel? Do you like... I like you know travel. I, mean? I travel okay. quite a bit. I've traveled quite a bit, yeah. Okay. Like so, I, I, yeah. Okay, so that's an interesting hobby that you can invite her to join you on. Yeah. Um, so... Can I just can I just ask you uh, the, the second okay. question that I had again? Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you get rid of that thought that you're less than... Like, you know, a guy that you consider yourself better than do you just kind of take a step back and check your ego or do you like, how do you, how do you move on from the fact that she was willing to do these things with other people and not with you and you consider that you treated her better and you're a better catch? Well, you're, that you know. alone is a deal breaker. I mean, I would never be a chick's second, third, fourth, 10th choice. And 
if you're not her first choice, then yeah. why even bother with her? And how do you deal with that as in your ego? Like, how do you deal with that with your with yourself, knowing that you walked away and she saw you that way? Well, you just surrender to it. You know, you just surrender to it. Okay. She doesn't see me as her best option. She doesn't have genuine burning desire for me. She's had it for other guys. Fine. And all that effort's just Go. like, you know, like it just. Now you, know. you can't, no, you can't buy your way into a woman's heart, taking her on trips, paying for the, you know, for the babysitting for the kids so that you can wine and dine her and all sorts. Like you can't, guys that, that, that lead with their wallet will only yeah. get used for their wallet. I was trying to take care of her. Like I was trying to, yeah, you know, which is fine, but women only like she has to earn it, right? Like if you want to take care of a woman and you want her to stay home and raise your kids, that's yeah. when you take care of a woman, right? But yeah. you should not be taking care of her before she's earned it. You certainly shouldn't be taking care of another man's child. That's called cuckoldry. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So. It's just raising your standards. Like I kind of opened, you know, the show with earlier about loneliness and being alone and all sorts of stuff. Like, yeah, you need to raise your standards. Like, you know, like you set these higher expectations for yourself professionally and you get a law degree and you go to school for all these years and you do all the bullshit long hours early on because you're yeah. you know, the law firm bitch and all that sort of stuff. And you yeah. work your way up the rank and you put in the time and you get more money, more money. Like, I don't know if you run your own firm or if you work at a partnership no, I work or whatever it happens to be. Yeah, Sorry? I work for a firm, but um, yeah. I I was a CFA for a while before. Like, yeah. I have house investments all over Canada. Like, I I, I I'm I'm okay. Like, I'm not uh, I'm not broke, but I'm not right. like cash rich, you know. Right. So as far as money goes, you've got that squared away, and the vast yeah. majority of men out there don't have that squared away. So now that you've got the money part of your life done, you have to work on the attraction part of your life, right? And there's yeah. things that you can still do about that with style uh training with combat sports like all of these things when you kind of roll them in a ball they sort of have a compound effect and you just look better right do you think now, i'm do you think i'm too old maybe <laughs> you know like no. I'm back, Dude, 36 I i'm a lot older than you and i and if i was single today i would have no problem pulling women no problem I, I, I just sometimes I I can't even like approach it just i don't know yeah. it's just some it's just something weird man but well, i know I mean, it's, I mean, I spent a little time in so I was talking at the opening about the junior ranger program and we went to yeah. Sudbury a few times when I was up at that camp. Um, and Sudbury is a weird place, dude. It's, it's a, it's a small, big town, very Northern Canadian kind of rednecky. Um, yeah. 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 and you know, like a Brown tax lawyer doesn't really fit in there. Right. So not at all, <laughs> yeah. but <laughs> but there's going to be women that have a taste for an exotic guy. And I think that if you kind of play to that fiddle, you know, if you play that uh, card and you play it strongly and you max out in every area that you can, I, I don't see any reason why you can't find yourself in a position where you're spoiled for choice for women within six to 12 months. You know, if you do all that work on yourself. Yeah. And again, yeah. but like all of this shouldn't be to get girls. This should yes. be to get rid of this loser girl and, and, you know, put your life first, put your life first and foremost there. So yeah, but it, she it, makes me question it, Rich. When I, when I, when I say these things to her, she comes back at me. She's like, you're never going to find another me. Um, you know, like you're like, you're like, she's, you're a, she's an old single mom with a bad attitude that spent her youth sharing her body with loads of guys. Yes. Yeah. I know. Look man, at it, it from that perspective heart, and be disgusted with it and just let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like a highly intelligent, educated guy like you, that's an accountant and a lawyer must be able to see past her bullshit. Oh, it, it is, but it's just when she like when when she tells me that she's not going to do something with me because she doesn't owe me and I'm investing Good, so much off. time. Bye. Like Yeah. Dude, you've you've got to get to the point where you can walk away from women, right? Yes, until, I know. Until yeah. until you can get to the point where you can just say no and walk away, you're forever going to be handcuffed to their you know, to their beauty, to their sexuality, you know, whatever it happens to be. Like I learned this lesson in my twenties, man. Let me tell you the story. So I was, I was 24, 25, you know, again, in my twenties, I wasn't well off, you know, I was sort of working, you know, corporate world making, you know, the standard uh, salary doing a job, you know, just over broke. And yeah, yeah. my girlfriend had come over and I had to go to the no frills and you know what no frills is, is a shitty grocery store in Canada do, yeah. that sells discount shit, yeah. um, you know, to get my grocery shopping done. 
yeah. and she was coming with me. And as I'm leaving my house, immediately she starts chirping me about how, uh, I don't know, Becky's boyfriend did this for her and Sam's, uh, you know, doing this for her girlfriend and her sister's boyfriend's doing this. And why don't I do that? And it was chirp, 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 blah, blah, blah. And then I heard cheap. And as soon as I heard cheap, I was like, fuck this shit. I grabbed the top of the steering wheel, <laughs> threw it over 180, turned the car around two lanes, just drove home, didn't say a word. She's in the car doing all this shit, freaking out. What are you doing? Oh my God. Just drove straight home, pulled in front of my house. I reached over, I opened the door. I said, get out. Yeah. And I, I, I just got her out of my car. You know what happened? I went to the grocery store, started doing my shopping. I'm pushing my buggy. By the time I got to the third aisle, I feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around, it's her. I'm so Oops. sorry. I'm really sorry. That's what controlling the frame looks like. That's what walking away from a shit woman looks like. Until you can get there, you're forever going to be handcuffed to women and beholden to them. And they're so used to controlling guys like this. Like throughout their entire lives, at some point, women learn their beauty, their sexuality can be used to manipulate guys. What does she do yes. for a living? Uh, she's a social worker. She's a social worker. Yeah, like kids and, and a lawyer stuff. accountant is hung up over a 40 year old single mom social worker with a bad attitude that spent her youth sharing her bodies with a bunch of dudes. I know, Rich. Believe me, man. I know. Trust me. You can I, do so much better. I, my friends, <laughs> lock, my friends, when they hear about this, are, trust me, man. It's, it's, I have a great, like, I just went to Europe. Uh, and I was the best man at, at a guy's wedding and we had it at like this really prestigious place in London. And like, I have a great, you know, friendship circle. I got a great family. My dad passed away, but I have a great family. Like I I'm, I'm all set, but it's just, I can't, I just wanted to win, you know, like I just wanted to like, kind of like get her to like me the way I liked her, you know, like I, you know, no. like I just, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I mean, and I, yeah. look, you know, accounting, I know accounting. You know how numbers have to reconcile, you know, with tables? Yeah. You know when you just can't get them to reconcile? Yeah. This is what you got going on. You cannot yeah. reconcile with this chick. Yeah. The table will just not balance yeah. out. And so it's just one of those things where you just have to throw it out and start all over again. So you would say just like working on like the physique and then hobbies, like those would be the two things that you've got to be interesting. You got to be captivating. You have to have interesting hobbies. You know, you got to look strong. You got to have some style. Um, you know, there's lots of great books, style, you know, consultants out there that can teach you how to dress better, get your hair cut right. If it's, you know, if it's sloppy, um, yeah. you know, there's lots of stuff that you can do. I mean, if you want, uh, you know, you can book me privately, like you're not poor. So if you want to book me privately, do like a quick 15 minute consult, turn on the camera, we can go through some stuff. The link is, yeah. um, on my website at richcooper.ca. Yeah. So if you want okay. to book me there, then we can do a private 15 minutes and sort of like, you know, dive into yeah, some sure. basic stuff. Yeah. Um, cool. and just the, the last thing, no question. I just wanted to, to say again, um, yeah. you know, uh, I lost my dad at a, at a young age and I went through a lot of hard times and, you know, I love Rolo, but, uh, for some reason I, I've become a huge fan of yours. I just wanted to let you know that I watch your videos religiously and, um, I really, uh, uh do admire you. And so, uh, I just wanted to convey that to you and, and thank you for doing what you're doing. Listen, man, I appreciate it. I'm, you know, huge, uh, gratitude. So, uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah, thank you, Rich. Okay, man. Take care. Uh, that's tough, man. It's it's you know it's tough to hear when you see a like hear a guy and I and I haven't watched the video obviously because I'm talking you know live here, but I'm I'm going back in my head because I get so many of these sponsored requests and it's just like reading their story and you offer some feedback based on the story and there's obviously more to the story than just you know what you read, but it's like you come across a guy that's done the work in his life, owns real estate, has lots of cash, um, you know, has, has something going on and you get hung up over a, an older woman. That's a social worker with a bad attitude that shared her body with a bunch of dudes. It's like, start by raising your standards, you know, um, you know, we can get into a lot more details, um, you know, on a private console. Cause you gotta, I mean, you gotta take a look at the guy and I understand, you know, you want to stay, a non on a public channel, but, um, it, it's, you know, it's tough to hear when you hear these weapons and they get stuck on this bullshit. Um, all right, let's, let's grab uh, another one or two here and see what we got. Uh, L 99. Let's do L 99. I don't know what that means, but L 99. What's up, buddy? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? 
Yes. What can I do for you tonight? What's up? Hey, Rich. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, I know this is uh, like about dating and stuff, but could I ask a quick question around a uh, startup or business? Or Ask me uh, anything, man. Ask me anything. AMA. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. So honestly, your five kind of type of ways of earning high income literally exploded the way that I see the world. So thank you for that. Good. Like, it's crazy. I see can I get it. you to speak up just a little bit? Okay, yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, I just wanted to say the five types of earning income, like high income, exploded the way I see the world. I see it out in the world as I'm speaking to people at networking. I kind of see the choices that people made, and it's just exploded Good. the way that I've seen it. So thank you. I, I just wanted to ask, um, in terms of entrepreneurship, what do you think about um, tech startups? Um, do you think they're a sensible thing to do? Because obviously with tech startups a lot of the time you're kind of sacrificing the now for like maybe five years or seven years and yeah what do you think about raising you know vc and stuff like that do you think it's a sensible option or do you think it's something that can kind of go pretty bad pretty quick and well most of them go bad in the tech startup world um yeah. in my course the school of entrepreneurship i talk about the kinds of businesses that are ideal to run that are profitable, they're fun, they're easy, they're location independent. Like these are all the things that I recommend that you contemplate when it comes to creating a business because you're the architect of this thing, right? Like you're, you know, you're you're basically on the drawing board working on the blueprint of what you're building. Yeah. Tech startups, unless you've got experience in tech uh, or have had a successful exit or have a tech partner, I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole because because the success mm. rate is so low. The upside of it all, though, is that they have the best multiples. You know, they still usually sell for the most money, but most people that end up giving up ownership or or some interest in the business to others uh, end up actually walking away from the business with almost nothing. That's right. statistically speaking, by the way. Oh, wow. Is this That's something that, that you've got experience in? Like, what's the plan? Are you looking at doing an app or... Um, kind of, yeah. I want to do kind of um software for uh, like estate planners, um, mm. just to help them automate their stuff. But I was thinking more about just making it a lifestyle SaaS as opposed to trying to and just keep it as like a cash flowing asset as opposed to trying to do a big thing and sell it and yeah, that yeah. Kind of, do you have the money that's needed to get this thing off the ground? Um, uh, no, 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 I don't actually. Then you're going to have to get some angel <laughs> investors or somebody to, you know, to chip in. And usually the amount that they take, like the ownership stake that they take, um, mm -hmm. and through time, because you need to raise more capital. So they'll be like, okay, you know, we'll give you a quarter mil, right? And we want yeah. 10%. And then six months later, you're mm -hmm. out of cash because development costs, you're hiring people. You've already got skin in the yeah. game. Then you're like, okay, well, I need more money. And, you know, you go raise another million dollars, right? And all of a sudden now you've given up another 25% of the business. So what ends yeah. up happening is you end up raising so much capital and then giving away so much in the way of the interest of the business that you lose control, right? So you have to, like, yeah. it's, look, man, it's a slippery slope. It's not, it's not my wheelhouse. I'm, um, mm -hmm. I'm a bootstrapper, you know, when it comes to businesses, the sort of stuff that I talk about in my school of entrepreneurship is tied into that sort of mind mindset. Um, yeah. but if it's something that you want to do and you've got the experience and you got a good team and you know what you're doing, then just, just be very careful and very intentional about it. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I think that answered my question. I think I definitely uh, won't go down that direction. So thank you so much. All right, man. See you later. You're a savior, Rich. Okay. Ciao. <laughs> Um, by the way, guys, the, the wealth creation methods that he's talking about, I was dealing with those in the month of October. So you can go back to the unplugged alpha podcast in October and you'll see some, uh, some of the videos talking about stuff like that. Um, let's see, we got time for, I think one more. So I'll give it to William over here and, uh, William, how you doing? 20 year old trying to navigate dating. What's going on? Can you hear me? Yeah, man. What you got for me tonight? So I'm currently 20 years old living in boston right now and i'm navigating the dating market as i said i'm just wondering right now because i am going on a couple of dates and they haven't been as promising as i guess i hope mm -hmm. do you know what i should do as far as i guess differentiating what i should do with my time as far as dating or working on myself and 
I guess, going towards my passion of real estate. Okay. Um, have you read my book? I have. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's the plan? Like you're talking about getting into real estate, acquiring real estate, selling real estate, selling real estate. Yep. Okay. And how far down that path have you gotten? So right now I'm looking for a brokerage to sign up with, with the mm -hmm. help of my uncle, who's also into it. So very mm -hmm. new kind okay. of, yeah, starting at the bottom. And what's not working in, uh, you know, your love life. So I've gone on a couple of dates from the dating apps and I've just found that the SMV value or like, I guess the, the caliber of women aren't necessarily what I would hope for. Mm -hmm. And because I am 20, I'm not necessarily hoping to go into like a relationship, probably more spinning plates mm -hmm. as you like to say. But, um, I definitely find that when you do, when I am doing that, the SMV value is not what I'd hope it to be. So yeah. I'm trying to work on myself, but I'm just wondering what you think about. And if you've ever had a time in your life when you've kind of found you've had to prioritize the work over, I guess, the dating, or if it's just something you've always done. Like look, man, if I could, you know, if I can look at you or if I can close my eyes right now and talk to you as if I'm talking to myself at 20 years old, yeah, I'd say, don't worry about the chicks. Focus on productivity because at your age, you're way more productive than I am. Dude, I could work for days straight, you know, in my 20s and completely lose track of time, not worry about anything, be super productive, pump it, all kinds of shit. The older you get, the harder it is, you know, to do stuff like that. I'd be laying the foundation, the groundwork for the rest of my life, putting a dent in the universe or working towards, you know, putting that dent in the universe, whatever it is that you happen to want to be or become and just let the uh let like, like the love life thing sort of happen right okay. i'm not saying you know sort of like go downstream like a dead fish with it but put yourself out there you find attractive women that you like make an approach if it goes great if it doesn't so what learn from it use the dating apps if you want you're going to find that dating apps have a lot of riffraff on it, especially in Boston. Like I've been to Boston a few times. There's, I mean, there's some cute girls there, but there's also a lot of shit too. Um, so I wouldn't put a huge emphasis on, oh, I have to have a girl or I got to have a girlfriend or I'm not complete if I haven't dated anybody this week or anything like that. You'll be surprised how much easier it is, you know, to deal with women when you get your shit squared away and you got, you know, business going on, you're driving a nice car, you're wearing nice clothes. Yeah. You know, you're doing interesting shit. Oh, you, you got invited on a yacht this weekend. Cool. You know, you, you know, but you can bring a date. Well, sure. You know, you've got three girls you're talking to in your phone, pick the best one or, you know, whoever's available, stuff like that starts to happen. Right. So it's like, how do I navigate the dating marketplace? I'd be asking questions like, how do I navigate making serious fucking money? I guess that is the major question I'm asking as far as what I should be prioritizing. Yeah. The two of those. You. Yeah. It's like, dude, it always comes back to the same thing. Prioritize yourself, yeah. right? Because when you get squared away, you're making good money, you're living a good life, you're interesting, you're captivating, you got solid friends that you hang out with, you know, your network's great, you can travel when you want, take time off when you want. Women will just be there. Yeah. It's amazing how that happens, but women are just there. That's a, like, I guess that's what I've been telling myself. I just kind of need the reassurance. And um, I guess another question would be, as somebody who is my age coming out of college with a little bit of college debt, do you think the value of going into like the martial arts or those, um, I guess, hobbies, you call them, yeah. and putting that time and also the money into those, do you think that's worthwhile as someone who's definitely trying to budget right now? Yeah. I, I mean, what does it cost to join a, a dojo and do group classes? Not much monthly, 100, 160 bucks, you know, yeah. something around that. Mm -hmm. I mean, definitely have a gym membership. Yeah, I'm um, doing that, yeah. But I don't know what do you like to like strike striking some boxing you like rolling do some jujitsu yeah you know what is it that you like you know you want to learn some self-defense because you live in a shitty neighborhood you want or you like to travel to shitty countries that have some difficult areas learn some krav right yeah. um but it's, it's you know it's a good place to meet awesome dudes uh learn a useful skill improve your cardiovascular health uh be more competent which is also attractive to women you know too um yeah, uh, look, man, everything that you do by raising your standards and doing things that are more that are that are going to increase the bar for you, that are going to improve your life, that are going to give you exposure to better rooms. So you're not you know, the smartest guy in rooms. Work on that because 
when you are in those better rooms where you're not the smartest guy in the room and you're networking with these cool people, you're going to start to notice the caliber of women in these rooms goes up too, right? Yeah. They're more attractive. They're more agreeable. They're more feminine, generally speaking. They can also be more conniving too. <laughs> yeah. So you have to, so, so ignoring women completely is never advisable, right? Like learn women, learn what they respond to. Right. I definitely like to not be 40 years old and trying to figure out somebody to marry and have no experience at all. So, yeah, like you don't want to end up like our lawyer friend, um, you know, earlier who's, who's, you know, 36 and he's, you know, he's the opposite of you, right? Like he's done some, you know, he's done the time and he's putting a dent in the universe, but he doesn't have a high opinion of himself and he's dealing with shitty women. Gotcha. Right? So, you know, get the, get the self-improvement, make the bank. But as you're doing that, figure out chicks along the way so that you don't find yourself in a position where you're, you know, where you got one itis for a 41 year old social worker with a bad attitude. I guess I was, I was telling myself that too. I just needed the reassurance. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Much. All right, Will. Thanks, man. Have a good one. See you, brother. All right. I think we'll wrap it up on that note. Uh, call it an evening. Moff has uh, some of the gals lined up this Wednesday night for ladies night. I hope you guys enjoyed your Thanksgiving. Um, so we'll be back Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard. Uh, look out for that. What else? I think that's it. Um, oh, Black, Fr Black Friday sale on my supplements. So I sent an email out to my list. I mentioned it on some social media here and there. Um, up until Friday, I created a coupon code Black Friday. Just those two words together. There's three supplements, the whey protein, the amino acid uh, complex, and the nitric oxide nitric oxide boosting uh, supplement. Um, let me just quickly pull them up here. I should mention it. I always forget this stuff. Uh, okay. Bah, 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 and shop. Present on screen. There we go. We'll do it this way. Keep it simple. So for these uh, supplements here, so alpha pump, the whey protein supplement here and the amino acid supplement they're all the coupon code will work on them for 40 percent off so go, go grab some if it's something that you use on a regular basis grab a couple um it's basically you know clearing it out at uh, cost uh just wanted you guys to try out some of my favorite supplements at uh you know black friday deal and uh see how you like them so go check that out Leave a like, a comment, you know, do all the YouTube stuff for the algorithms. We'll see you guys on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Peace out. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that podcast, make sure you visit my website at richcooper.ca to learn more about my courses, my book, The Unplugged Alpha, community, or booking me for private coaching. Also, if you are a Canadian with $15,000 or more of credit card debt and what you are doing right now isn't paying off the balances, then visit totaldebtfreedom.ca and hit get a free quote to see if you qualify to settle your credit card debt for less than you owe today over the next 48 months. Make sure you check out the top pinned